Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Hopeful Chewbacca back at the Church of Chewbacca, and today we're going to go over three more bronze or silver icon upgrades, and this time it's the 87 Nicholas Lindstrom, Stan Makita, and Dennis Potfin, two 92 overall versions of themselves. We're going to give them in-depth true reviews, rate them one through five Chewies, as we always do for these reviews. Let's get into it. Nicholas Lindstrom. The longtime Red Wing that won four Stanley Cups with the team in 1997, 1998, 2002, and 2008. I know for at least the one in 2008, he was the captain of the team. I believe the three earlier ones, Steve Eiserman was still the captain, if I'm not mistaken. He was also a seven-time Norris Trophy winner, which, which means he was the best defenseman in the league for those seven seasons. So he's one of the best to ever do it. Unfortunately for the six foot one, 190 pound left-handed shooting defenseman, this card does not do him justice. He has two points for heart and soul, which is the worst team synergy. Then he has two points for shutdown for his player synergy. So the heart and soul gives you balance, endurance, shot blocking, and face offs. So face offs aren't even needed for a defenseman. I mean, it's not a big deal because it's team synergy, but the other three categories are terrible for attributes. Shutdown is not bad for defenseman, gives you body checking, slap shot accuracy, puck control, and shot blocking. But once again, it's not a premier synergy. So they really just let him down on his synergies this year. Looking at the card without the synergies, he has 85 acceleration, 90 agility, 95 balance. 88 endurance with 87 speed so he's not even that great of a skater either and he was one of the best skating defensemen that's one of the reasons why he always won the Norris trophy is he was great defensively he was great offensively he was a pure two-way defenseman and a phenomenal leader on the Detroit Red Wings when they were at the top of their game for his shooting he has 95 for slap shot power and wrist shot power 90 wrist shot accuracy 88 slap shot accuracy his hands are 88 deking 94 offensive awareness 88 hand eye 95 passing with 94 puck control so pretty good hands but not anything extraordinary his body checking is 93 his strength 95 so those are really good numbers his checking categories will be 96 defense awareness 93 shot blocking 93 stick checking with 83 discipline the lindstrom is obviously going to be very good defensively he has a very good active stick in the game I have played with his 87 overall in one of the Hut Rush events. I mean, I know that's not quite the same because it's not like really simulation hockey. It's more arcade style, but he actually had a really good active stick. He skated really well for his card. So I have played with him, and I think that the animations he has is great, but the synergies are bad. He's not an amazing skater. I'm going to have to give this Lindstrom three Chewies, which is very disappointing because he's one of my favorite players to watch growing up. I mean, I'm a Penguins fan, not a Red Wings fan, obviously. As they like to say, real recognizes real, and essentially he's one of the best defensemen to ever do it, even if he did beat the Pittsburgh Penguins in the Stanley Cup later on in his career in that 2007 Stanley Cup victory. It happens. That doesn't mean that I did not enjoy watching him play hockey. Stan Makita. Makita was one of the most prolific forwards in the 1960s for the Chicago Blackhawks. He won MVP twice as well. He was the leading scorer four times in the 1960s alone. He's five foot nine, 169 pounds, right-handed shooting. Another thing to know about Makita is he was very proud of his Slovak heritage. Even though he came over to the United States from Czechoslovakia because the Czech Republic and Slovakia used to be combined whenever there was the Soviet Union or the Soviet bloc in Eastern Europe still when the USSR was still around. He has two points for balance, two points for wingman. Balance is that above average team synergy. It's not the best, but it's definitely one that can be useful. The wingman will give you acceleration, wrist shot accuracy, and passing. The balance gives you the endurance, wrist shot power, deking, puck control, and defensive awareness. So it has some very good synergies for that balance, but it's not one that you like prioritize. Because of these two synergies, the Makita is actually a little bit appealing, but his skating's still not that great. You're looking at a car with 87 acceleration, 90 agility, 92 balance, 88 endurance with 87 speed. Now for a 92 overall, those are not sk great skating numbers. If it was his 87 overall car, those would be wonderful skating numbers. So you can max him at 90 speed, and you can actually get him up 294 acceleration if you have wingman and spark activated which isn't too bad speed wise but it's still not really what you're looking for whenever you're investing in a car that's 92 overall as for a shooting he has 92 slap shot power and wrist shot power 94 wrist shot accuracy 93 slap shot accuracy his hands are 89 deking 98 offense awareness 88 hand eye 94 passing and 95 puck control so actually pretty good hands he's not a big time deker but he does have the good passing puck control and offensive awareness 
He can throw the body a little bit for a smaller guy, 5'9", and 90 body checking, 92 strength. His checking category is 97 defense awareness, 94 shot blocking, 98 stick checking with 90 face-offs, as well as 72 discipline. So you can't play him at center or wing. This Makita last year, I thought he was one of the best legend cards, one of the all-time great alumni players to play with. However, this year, I'm not too fond of the card. Once again, kind of like that Nicholas Lindstrom as I play with him in Hut Rush. I know it's not the exact same, but you still kind of get a feel for how the card feels. And he just feels that he's not as agile as he should be for his size. He just seems like he plays way bigger than he is and not in a good way. Also, his skating's not fantastic, but he does have better synergies in that Lindstrom. I'm going to give this Makita four Chewies because the rest of his attributes are a pretty darn good. It's just skating that's a little bit of a holdback for me. On top of he doesn't have like premier synergies and just the feel of the card itself is not the best. Like it was in NHL 20 as well as NHL 19 for me personally. Maybe you guys feel a little bit different about this Makita. But I'm going to stay strong on this four Chewies. I think it's a fair rating for the Makita. Dennis Potvin. The three-time Norris Trophy winner in the 1970s, Dennis Potvin. He was considered one of the best offensive defensemen to ever play the game. He was actually the first defenseman to reach 300 goals in regular season play. So he's definitely a guy that has a nasty shot. The biggest thing with this Potvin is we'll get into is his skating is not very good. He's six foot tall, 205 pounds, left-handed shooting. He has two points for spark and two points for wingman. So that actually does help a lot with the acceleration. The wingman allows you to get up to 87 acceleration as well as 95 wrist shot accuracy and 99 passing. The spark will add another plus four in acceleration as well as body checking, strength, and discipline. So overall, you can get up to 91 acceleration and 88 speed max with distributor. So the skating is not completely awful if you have some synergies for help. But looking at the skating with nothing on it, it's 84 acceleration, 92 agility, 89 balance, 86 endurance with 85 speed. The shooting is phenomenal. 94 wrist shot power, 92 wrist shot accuracy, 96 wrist shot power, 93 slap shot accuracy, 96 slap shot power, 93 slap shot accuracy. So he has one of the best slap shots in the game, especially for his size because he's going to play like a tank at that 205. His hands are 90 deking, 98 offensive awareness, 91 hand-eye, 97 passing, 95 puck control. So great hands as well. The defense is going to be 88 body checking, 89 strength, 86 aggression. Those numbers are pretty good. Not the best body checking. You maybe like to see a little bit more because he's not the fastest skater. But I understand he was more of an offensive defenseman, a goal scorer, than he was a rough and tough kind of beat you up defenseman that played in his era. As for checking, he has 98 Defensive awareness, 92 shot blocking, and 96 stick checking. He's 71 discipline, which the discipline's a little bit low. But the defensive awareness, stick checking, and shot blocking are phenomenal numbers. The biggest thing holding this Potvin back is his skating. He has a very, very good synergies, though. But my concern is you have to have wingman and spark to really make him viable, as well as distributor. If you don't have those, he's not that great of a card. But the rest of his attributes are phenomenal this is one of those cards that i knew i was going to regret having to grade when it comes to a chewy rating because he could be anywhere from a three and a half chewy depending how you feel about having to have necessary like 90 minimum speed or he could be all the way up to four and a half chew if you think the speed's really not that important because he does have great synergies so i'm going to go somewhere in the middle here i'm going to give him four chewies and those four chewies lean more towards the four and a half chewy scale than the three and a half chewy scale. And it's really because of his synergies. There is no other left-handed defenseman in the game that have two spark that's not a master set player. And I believe the only one that does that is the brand new Jack Johnson. Now we do have Ekblad that's a master set player that has one spark but not two spark. So you're looking at a comparing Poffin to a, the only other card that has a two spark for a left-handed defenseman. And you're looking at somebody that's about 800,000 coins right now. Maybe a little bit less, give or take. But that's what the 94 overall Jack Johnson is for the tradable version. So Potvin synergies really separate him from some of the other cards. It's just whether or not you want to deal with the slow speed that Potvin does have. I will say also that Al McGinnis is kind of in the same boat. And he has two spark as well. But he has Magician as his player synergy. But they're kind of in the same boat. They're both big-time goal scorers when they played, but I do think this Poffin's actually a little bit better than an Al McGinnis. The Al McGinnis is just a little bit bigger body than this Poffin is, but I do really like this Dennis Poffin. It's just I'm not sure about him not being able to skate that fast. You're going to have to put him with someone like a Kale McCarr, somebody that's a little bit faster, for me to feel a little bit better about picking him up. That's going to wrap up the true review of these three 92 overall silver icons, Nicholas Backstrom, Stan Makita, and Dennis Poffin. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about these three cards. Do you think they're good? Do you think they're bad? Do you think I was too hard on them? 
I would have to say that most of you should at least be disappointed like I am about Nicholas Lindstrom having terrible synergies. I mean, I mentioned it in his 87 overall card that the synergies just really kill him. As well as they didn't really make him as good of a skater as he was. I think the Makita and the Poffin do have some potential though. But it's really whether or not you like the cards and the attributes that they do have. I think Poffin out of the three is probably the best just because of his synergies. As always, I appreciate all the support you guys give me. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video with any of your friends that play NHL 21. As well as hit that thumbs up button so we can continue to grow the channel. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. You guys have a great day and be safe.